I am Josh Hader, Northeast Director for Senator Rounds. Um, I'll go ahead and get started while they're working on the uh, technical difficulties. Uh, the first thing that I would state before we get into uh, just a few of the things that the Senator wanted me to talk about today, I want to let you all know that I have my business card with me. I would encourage you to take one of those. You know, as we look at the issues that you all face, especially the upcoming Farm Bill, it's important to the Senator uh, that we get your feedback, whether it be in small groups and uh, just on an individual basis or events like this, we want to be involved because that's going to be a very important bill that we need to start working on now. Of course, if you're all watching the news right now, we've got a lot of other things that we're working on, but we need to make sure that we're making ag a priority because it's our number one business in South Dakota. So with that said, as we get done with kind of talking today, I would encourage all of you uh, that don't have my card to take that so we can get together and talk about some of the important issues. Uh, with that said, I just wanted to touch on a couple things real briefly that the Senator wanted me to talk about today. And of course, the first one that you're all experiencing is the drought. Uh, you know, in South Dakota, we're getting no moisture right now. If it sprinkles, we're all very excited. But with that said, you know, the Senator is pleased uh, that uh, Sonny Perdue, who is the Secretary of Ag and is also a friend and uh, former governor who served with Senator Rounds, uh, is continuing to, to work to provide uh, relief to pr producers, which of course all of us in the congressional delegation support. I just want to give you a couple timeline events of, of action that's taken place on June 24th. USDA opened up CRP acres for grazing through September 30th, and this includes all of South Dakota. On July 10th, USDA opened up CRP acres for haying beginning this coming Sunday, the 16th through August 30th. Uh, and of course, additionally, a growing number of counties are becoming eligible to receive additional drought relief benefits. Um, so far, the, the counties include Campbell, Corson, Harding, and McPherson, uh, and this includes FSA emergency loans. Um, one of the things I would ask everybody here to do if you get an opportunity is to visit our website, rounds.senate.gov, and there's a little tab on there that says sign up for the rounds report. Now, that's something that we send out on a weekly basis or if there's breaking news, so to speak, on a daily basis. Uh, it's something we email out, so if there's something that is very pressing that is egg-related, we can email that out to you right away so you kind of stay ahead of the curve in what Senator Rounds is working on. So again, I would encourage you all to visit rounds.senate.gov and, and sound, sign up for the Rounds Report. A uh, Couple other things we want to talk about with regard to uh, additional relief. Uh, of course, everybody uh, is kind of talking about raising the FSA loan guarantee limit. Uh, Senator Rounds is working on legislation that would uh, increase the cap on the FSA loan guarantee limit, uh, providing a li additional relief to all of you and our ranchers during tough times like we're facing right now. Uh, another aspect that the Senator is working on is he, he supports the enhancing credit opportunities in, in rural America, the CORA Act. Uh, that was introduced in the House earlier this year by Lynn Jenkins of Kansas, uh, which would create new targeted tax incentive for agriculture and rural residential lending to help our ranchers and farmers in rural America. Uh, we're working on that, a, a, a companion bill in the Senate Ag Committee right now. Um, if anybody has any feedback on that, again, find me afterwards. We're going to stick around this morning. We'll be happy to talk to you about that. And of course, what we're all talking about right now is the 2018 uh, Farm Bill. You know, a couple of important discussions that are taking place is uh, safety net programs such as crop insurance and uh, the CRP program, you know, which are designed to help all of you during adverse times such as the drought we're currently experiencing. Crop insurance is an important safety net that provides South Dakota producers with much, much needed certainty from Washington. Yeah, I, I hate to use the word certainty from Washington right now. Uh, everything's kind of in uncertain times. Uh, but when natural disasters do strike, it is a good program to help out the agricultural community. Uh, just a note, the senator wanted me to let you know that he did oppose all efforts to cut the important program during last year's budget negotiations and worked with uh, Senator McConnell to ensure that those proposed cuts were restored he will continue to work to ensure that uh, there are no cuts as future budgets go forward. And as you all look at budgets, one thing to keep important, that one thing that's important, uh, the president will submit a budget, but it's pretty much dead on arrival. It's a guideline of what he wants to do. But just know, I know, I, I believe I speak for our entire delegation when I say you've got great advocates to ensure we are protecting our number one resource in South Dakota, which is our agriculture. So just a couple other things we wanted to talk about on trade. Of course, free and fair trade plays an important role in American commerce from higher wages for our workers to support, supporting small businesses and ag. Uh, and tr trade is what keeps our economy vibrant. I think we can all agree on that. 
you know, and right now that's critically important in the, in the ag sector, which has seen a nearly 50% uh, decrease over the, the past four years. And I'm sure many of, you, many of you in this room have felt that. You know, increasing trade opportunities is vital to opening new markets that can help all of you return and bounce back from the loss as some of you have experienced. And in South Dakota alone, trade supports over 130,000 jobs. And in 2013, we exported $3.7 billion worth of products out of this great state, a state of less than a million people. I think that's pretty amazing. On May 4th of this year, Senator uh, Rounds sat down to the conversation with then U.S. Trade Representative Lighthizer. Uh, and just a couple notes, he wanted me to tell you all about that meeting. Um, he had stressed upon the importance of tra trade in the ag community. Lighthizer agreed with that. They spoke about the importance of reopening the Chinese market to U.S. beef, which it now is, uh, maintaining ag trade with Mexico and Canada via NAFTA. NAFTA is an important uh, component to our trade. The senator strongly supports that. Uh, and lowering tariffs on U.S. ag product products as they enter the Japanese market. Um, Senator Rounds uh, sent a follow-up letter to Ambassador Lighthizer um, about his confirmation, stressing these points and, and re reiterating their conversation, just to ensure he knows and understands the importance of, of working with all of you and ensuring that we have affordable trade as we uh, work on now bilateral agreements. Um, Senator Rounds joined 15 other senators, including Thune, in a letter to Lighthizer to stress the importance of egg trade and NAFTA. Again, we can't stress the importance of how important NAFTA is to all of you. You probably all recognize that. We are an advocate for that, and we will go to battle to ensure we have NAFTA moving forward. And just one other quick thing to talk about. Uh, recently, Japan overtook Mexico as the leading buyer of U.S. corn. Uh, Japan is now the top market for absorbing both U.S. beef and corn exports. And Japan would have been a part of the TPP before President Trump withdrew us from those negotiations. But an important point on that. U.S. products are subject to significant tariffs entering Japan currently. Senator Round supports increasing access to TPP markets and further access to China as well as maintaining our current relationships with Canada and Mexico. So again, that's just kind of uh, amongst all the other noise that you hear in Washington, D.C., we want to let you know, all of you in this room and everybody across South Dakota, that is in our number one industry is still always a top priority to us, even though you may not hear from us on a daily basis because we're talking about so many other things. Just know we're here for you. Again, we're gonna stick around this morning, so if you wanna have a conversation, you wanna take my business card, invite us to some events, we're happy to come talk. It's, it's your folks' ideas and your input as it relates to the 28 Farm Bill that's gonna help it make it work. And every individual can play an important role in that. Don't think that you can't. So if you have some ideas, you have some thoughts, Again, I can't stress how important it is to reach out to us and share those. Not every idea may be included, but you need to be listened to and you deserve to be listened to, all of you. So I would again encourage you to reach out to us and I wanna thank you all very much for the opportunity to spend a few minutes with you this morning. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning. My name is Rick Bauer. I'm with uh, Christy Nome's office, and uh, I'd just like to spend about five minutes with you today and, and just kind of relate on a couple of things, uh, farm bill-wise as well as uh, some other issues that are coming up. And we're going to start with farm bill because uh, that's what's coming up. Uh, it's two years away or a year and a half away, but it's very important. So I'm not going to get into a lot of specifics. I'm going to get into some very general topics that need to be discussed. The first topic that need to be discussed is we need the input. Just like Josh indicated, we need your input. First input I need is budget. Last farm bill, the farm community says, you know what? Here's $20 billion we're going to give back to the government, which we did. Is that what you want to do this time? We need that input. Then you can get in a lot of different scenarios uh, on different programs. And we're going to start with CRP. CRP. We have groups that want to have 45 million acres in CRP. We have other groups that are happy at the 24 level, and we have groups in between. What is your thoughts? How much 
CRP land should we have? What type of a program is it? Those are the type of questions we need to be asking and getting your input from your organization or as an individual. Commodity programs and titles. For the most part, they're working really well, and, and as Josh pointed out, the drought, while it's serious in North Central, there's absolutely no doubt about it. I traveled that area yesterday. There's no doubt about that it's uh, very, very serious, but the programs are working via the NRCS and, and FSA, uh, and so it's, it's slow, no arguments there, but that's the way it's supposed to be. So the programs are working. So while it's going to take a little time, uh, that's happening. So I don't see a lot of changes in those type of programs. There's going to be discussion uh, from the commodity loan or the commodity targets or the commodity uh, uh, price lines, those type of things. There's going to be some discussion on crop insurance and how should that work or is there changes available. One of the more interesting products that we have out there right now is called Whole Farm Crop Insurance. It is not going to be for everybody. Uh, we've had it for two years. Not used in South Dakota hardly at all. It was basically started uh, on the uh, West Coast for uh, the, the fruits and the nuts, and you can take that the way you want to take that. Uh, but I'm talking commodities, and uh, and and so uh, they they kind of morphed it into some things. Uh, I would suggest, from a livestock perspective, you take a look at that as an operation. Why? Because it it is based on income and it's based on some averages, and it is going to take a lot of paperwork uh, shuffling, but then uh, once you got that from a whole farm income, uh, premiums are a little bit less, and uh, you might be protected. And when you have drought, you have less income. Guess what? Not only do the farm programs kick in, but also your insurance program kicks in. You might have a blizzard, then you lose 10 or 15 head of your calves. There's no such thing as mortality insurance for the loss of calves. Well, you have a loss of income. That would kick in. It's just a different program that's hardly used in South Dakota. Not saying it fits everybody, but it might be something that's useful. We need to see if we can tweak that to make it better. And, and there's certainly tweaks that we need to do. So then, we need to kind of shift things. Um, Josh talked a little bit about trade and the different things with trade and, and uh, with the new administration, uh, trade's changing. Right or wrong, it's the way it's gonna be. We're gonna be looking at bilateral agreements and how that may or may not affect South Dakota. So the questions are, under a bilateral agreement, uh, will corn work better or will commodity groups be better under a bilateral agreement compared to the type of agreements we've had in the past? Have those questions been asked of your organizations? Do you have the information needed to make that decision? Where do you get that information? Those things are all part of the process as we try to make determinations of what is best for the agriculture industry as a nation. So, last but not least, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, Christie's role on um, Ways and Means. And the Ways and Means Committee is it's a huge committee opportunity, uh, mainly in the tax and money, uh, financial for, uh, reform and or opportunities to see how budgets work um, in Congress. She's been on that committee about a year and a half now, or two and a half years, I guess it'd be, and we got a uh, great opportunity just last week. And, and that opportunity was uh, via um, President Scott Vanderwall from the South Dakota Farm Bureau, who's also Vice President of the American Farm Bureau. It's one of the first opportunities a South Dakotan has had 
to talk about tax policy and tax reform in front of the Ways and Means Committee. So her position there is benefiting South Dakota greatly. And we all know we need some tax changes. And I don't care which portion of tax you want to talk about, whether it's income or estate or whatever. There needs to be changes. There needs to be understanding about limited government. Does that include agriculture? Ah, does it? I have a lot of farmers that say, oh yeah, I'm all for limited government and I want less money spent. Well, that includes your program. Help us decide how that works. Because that's what the policy process is about. Your input. And we do value your input. So the key that we have today is, I, I didn't get into a lot of the programs. We all kind of know that uh, they're there for us. There is a safety net. How do we use it? How can we improve it? I've talked to you more about the philosophical stuff that we absolutely have to have information on of your thoughts. I can tell you that there's probably going to be more money spent on research than has in the past. That's good. Okay? We need more money for infrastructure. Okay? South Dakota's been pretty successful in obtaining grants and or dollars from that standpoint. But the keys for the things that we need in Congress is information from our constituents, from the people who wish to have their voice heard. And that's either contacting me or contacting the website or contacting the state offices. And you all have that information. And it's pretty, if you don't, it's easy accessible. I thank you for your time. I will be here all day. Uh, I always enjoy the Ag Summit and listen to the speakers and the concepts and the precepts that we have to think about for the future because it's going to take a vision of what's going to change. And now it is my pleasure to induce Lynn that we can now hear as well as see. He's pretty good looking. Oh, we lost the picture. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I am done. And is Lynn on? Okay, we're going to let Lynn give his feel. Thank you for your time. Have a great conference. Okay, thank you so much. I think that's an example of uh, the good old South Dakota spirit that we miss here in Washington. We keep working on things until you get uh, accomplished what you want to do. Although my accomplishment, I mean, trying to get to South Dakota yesterday didn't work out as well as I planned. Uh, ended up uh, leaving here at 6 a.m., getting to Chicago and got back home from Chicago at 1.30 this morning after all the flights to South Dakota and other places were canceled. But uh, anyway, I really appreciate Nick Buddy, our IT expert here, and Jen who helped set this up, and Danny and all of those uh, there who made this possible so I could still have a chance to visit with you all about what's going on in Washington. And uh, one thing I do want to say, you know, with the drought that's going on, and that's something that uh, when I started farming back in 1972, I think was always the biggest uh, challenge in farming, although I didn't have the equipment and the uh, technology and the biotechnology that we do now, but uh, it seemed like every day of the summer you look towards the west for a cloud to roll in and give you some much needed rain, and a lot of times after the crops were burned up, the hay was gone, and uh, then it started raining, and certainly hope that isn't the case this year. But uh, anyway, you know, we've been, there's two things that have been really keeping us busy in Washington as far as the ag world. One has been the farm bill, and that's been eclipsed now by the uh, drought and trying to get as much assistance as possible. Uh, and of course, the main source of assistance, there's two things. One's a livestock forage program, which uh, we have several counties approved because they're in the D3 category. Uh, this morning's drought monitor should be coming out. Uh, at 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Uh, I'm sure a quick look at that will result in uh, more D3 area counties and more counties that are approved for uh, livestock forage program. And another uh, change as far as in the livestock area, the um, uh, insurance or RMA, uh, life, uh, risk protection program, LRP, uh, we got notified by a couple of agents last week that there's a 30-day P 
period uh, prior to the end of the contract that if you liquidate your livestock before that, you not only lose out on any chance of an indemnity, but you also forfeit the premium. And uh, so that was one thing we contacted RMA and, and uh, Senator Thune visited with the secretary about on Saturday, that along with the CRP hay and grazing. And uh, Tuesday they came out with a notice that uh, they were going to waive this 30-day uh, period for South Dakota, North Dakota, and Montana. So USDA has really been helping out they have with the uh, CRP name and grazing. And I do want to say, first of all, how much we appreciate the work that's done by the South Dakota State FSA office and the NRCS office. As with any program, there's a lot of paperwork, there's a lot of background things that need to be done, and even before anybody pays or grazes, there's paperwork to be done, and I know they've been working really hard to streamline that process so we don't have people sitting out there after the June 16th date, as Josh mentioned, which is the first date for A, uh, and get the paperwork <coughs> completed and now uh, be able to get out there and get that A harvested before it dries up any further. One more component of the CRP uh, emergency hay and grazing is the uh, environmentally sensitive practices. That includes about 480,000 acres in South Dakota that still are not eligible. They were last made eligible in the 2012 drought, and uh, we've been working very closely with the uh, wildlife conservation organizations to get their buy off on that because uh, this whole process and nesting period. Uh, the restrictions that are on CRP are the result of a lawsuit uh, filed several years ago when USDA uh, began a policy with managed hay and grazing. But uh, I will say I think the groups are on board and we're working with them to get their support made known to uh, USDA and uh, hopefully we can get these acres opened up as quickly as possible. And uh, just be patient and I know I got several calls yesterday when I was traveling from uh, guys have said, you know, I've got all this ground and it's still not available, and we're working on that. Senator Thune is working on that. Regarding the Farm Bill, uh, Senator Thune has introduced four pieces of legislation for commodity title, a new program, soil health and income protection program, which would be a short term uh, program, a set aside program, three to five years. As you know, with CRP, there's 10 to 15 year contracts for those. These times of low prices uh, want a shorter term alternative. This program uh, offers that uh, three to five year set aside requirement. They can buy out, get back in uh, crop production if they so desire, if prices improve, uh, their farming operation changes. So it's a very flexible program and it's planted to a conserving use cover and there's flexibility, a lot more flexibility as far as hay and uh, grazing those acres more so than are offered with CRP. Also included in that same legislation were uh, some management uh, streamlining practices for WRP, the Wetlands Reserve Program, other uh, uh, conservation easement type programs that have been pretty restrictive as far as what you can do with them. So, you know, the bottom line, uh, he's been working very closely, of course, with the, both the majority and minority ag committee on, on these proposals for the next farm bill, but also with all the stakeholders, with the commodity organizations, wildlife organizations. Uh, everybody's got to work together on the farm bill. You can't strike up and, and make enemies. It's such a fine line as far as getting everyone on board to get a farm bill passed. <coughs> and something why we're starting this early now even though it doesn't this one doesn't expire till september 30th of 2018 in uh, getting as many people on board getting these ideas out there another uh, program for his last bill or the next to the last one was a base mandatory base update bill basically just to see if we look at the policy of planting uh, our our current art and plc payments based on crop acreage bases. We've got a lot of ground out there, uh, not only in South Dakota, but other areas that uh, have are receiving payments, but maybe haven't been cropped for 10 years or even longer. And uh, there's also support for basing these payments on planted acres, which um, I can go into more detail on that, but it's just not good policy because that results in farmers uh, trying to farm for the program rather than for the markets. So anyway, mandatory base update, and it deals with uh, eliminating the generic base acres 
years that uh, evolved out of the last farm bill from cotton, but uh, that bill would save about $3 billion over 10 years. Uh, I don't know where we'll go with that. I've been meeting with the different organizations, um, gathering their uh, support, their comments, and seeing what happens with, uh, with that. And then also, uh, our last bill was on the livestock forage program. We offered a couple fixes for that. One that would actually uh, cut in half the amount of time eligible when a county's in the D2 category, uh, making them eligible quicker. And uh, also, as far as there's been issues with uh, uh, storm-related livestock deaths, like pneumonia, scours, uh, USDA at the <coughs> national level has been uh, much more restrictive as far as uh, saying, well, they didn't exercise enough management practices and didn't vaccinate when they should. And uh, for those of you that are cattlemen, you know, uh, you'd rather have a live calf out there and do everything you can to save it rather than say, I'm not gonna treat it, I'm just gonna let it die and get a, a livestock indemnity program payment. So we basically tried to uh, fix that and uh, make that uh, much more workable for those of you out in, in uh, the field. A few other things uh, going on. We actually have an Ag Committee hearing today. It's going to start in about 30 minutes. That's on specialty crops, organic uh, crops, and also some of the uh, USDA export programs. We had the Soybean Association in yesterday. They were very supportive of these programs. Uh, then also yesterday, Senator Thune met with Steve Sensky. Some of you may know him. He worked for Senator Abner at the same time Senator Thune did. Uh, and in, they're good friends, and I worked with Steve when he was an appointee under the Bush Senior Administration at USDA. He's now uh, CEO of the American Soybean Association. He will likely be our next uh, Deputy Secretary of Agriculture, which is the number two position there, and uh, would be very good for South Dakota. He's an SDS graduate. We'll get some of the other appointees in place and uh, <coughs> keep things rolling at USDA. Uh, with that, tax reform, we're working hard. Senator Thune's on the Finance Committee. He's uh, working to uh, make sure that in the reform package we don't do any harm to the current policies that are very helpful to the ag community. So a lot going on. I'm not even going to touch on health care. I know very little about it, and I'm smart enough to know if I don't know something about an issue to not talk about it. But uh, I'd rather focus on ag, which I know a little bit more about. But with that, thanks again, everybody who made it possible for me to be able to address you this way. And I uh, wish I could be there. I've been to the last several. It's a great job by our governor and his staff and uh, by Mike Jaspers and Danny and all those, Jody, who uh, helped put this together. I miss uh, not being able to uh, visit with everyone, but thanks for all you do and uh, for making South Dakota Ag great. Appreciate it.